Hey guys, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Chapter 23, Gauss Law, Prol number 24. Figure shows a cross section of a long, thin walled metal tube of radius r equal to 3 centimeters uh, with a charge per unit length of uh, lambda equal to 2 into 10 to the power minus 8 coulomb per meter. What is the magnitude of the electric field at a radial distance, part A, uh, half of the radius? and part B twice the radius, uh, part C graph E versus R uh, for a range from R equal to 0 to R equal to twice R. Okay. So we have a thin wall, a thin slender here, uh, charge slender. Uh, charge will be distributed obviously on the surface of the slender and charge per unit length of the slender is given that is equal to that is given lambda 2 into 10 to the power minus 8 uh, meter per cool, coulomb per meter. So, uh, we will first uh, find out the general uh, formula for the electric field and then we will go to the specific uh, question asked. So, we have a charge slender, a very long charge slender here, with charge on its surface, say positively charged. This is the axis of the slender. Radius of the slender is represented by capital R. And, uh, Charge per unit length will represent by lambda charge per unit length. We had to find out electric field due to this charge is slender inside as well as outside. One of the point part A is for inside at a distance of R divided by 2 then outside. We will uh, find out the general formula. So if we consider first we will find it for inside the slender inside the slender. Uh, we'll use Gauss law for this obviously. So I'll consider a Gaussian slender here inside it with a radius of small r, Gaussian slender. Then uh, Gauss law states uh, flux through this Gaussian slender which is integral e dot dA is equal to q enclosed divided by epsilon 0. Okay, q enclosed divided by epsilon 0. Or I can write it as E d a cos of theta. E is the electric field on the surface of different points on the surface of the Gaussian slender here. d a is the area element. Theta is angle between the direction of field and direction of area. Direction of area is taken perpendicular to the surface. Is equal to Q enclosed. Now you can see there is no charge inside the slender or uh, Gaussian slender. All the charges on the surface of the slender the given slender but our Gaussian surface our Gaussian slender is lying inside it so it doesn't contain any charge inside it so charge enclosed is equal to zero charge enclosed is equal to zero we simply means field inside the slender at all points is zero field inside the charge slender at all here 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 doesn't matter which point you are considering field is everywhere zero inside this uh, charge slender so, uh, first part tells us to find out field at a distance of r by 2. So, let us go for the first part now. Somewhere here at a distance of r by 2. At a distance of r. So, that point is lying inside the slender. So, field is going to be 0. Okay. Field is going to be 0. Now, outside the slender, if I again draw the same slender here, a very long slender. With a radius of r, this is charge is a positively charged with charge per unit length equal to lambda. Now we have to find out field outside this charged slender. So we'll consider a Gaussian slender. Okay, we'll consider a Gaussian slender like this. We'll consider a Gaussian slender like this. Now field due to this charged slender that has to be radial that has to be radial. So, field is going to be this way. Field is going to be this way. There is no other way for the electric field aligns. Field is going to be this way. Now, if you consider top of the Gaussian slender, part of it is lying inside the charge slender. So, there is no field inside it and part of it is lying outside it. But the part lying outside it has direction of area upward. Remember that is perpendicular to the surface. Okay, perpendicular, outward perpendicular to the surface. 
So angle between the electric field and area element is 90 degrees. We'll need this later on. Same is the case with the bottom surface. If I consider an element here, direction of area is this way and field is this way. So angle between them is 90 degrees. Okay, angle between them is 90 degrees. <clears throat> and if I consider an area element here on the curved surface of this Gaussian cylinder, then direction of area is radially outward along the normal, radially outward. And electric field is also in the same direction. You can see that. So angle between area and electric field is zero for the curved surface. For the top, it is 90 degrees. For the bottom, it is also 90 degrees. So, uh, and I'll consider length of the Gaussian cylinder as L. If length of the Gaussian cylinder is L, then it encloses uh, part of the charged cylinder whose length is also L. It encloses part of the cylinder from this point to this point here. And that part is of length L. Okay, And that will contain a charge of lambda into L because lambda is charge per unit length. So charge enclosed by the Gaussian cylinder is lambda into L. Okay, is lambda. lambda is charge per unit length. Uh, a unit length of cylinder contains a charge of lambda, has a charge of lambda, then L unit lengths will have a charge of lambda into L. Now let's go for Gauss law integral E dA cos of theta is equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon 0. Okay, Q enclosed divided by epsilon 0. Now I'll break this integral for different parts of the Gaussian cylinder. I'll write it this way, integral E dA cos of theta for the top that is this one here, this top, plus integral, just a minute, this is no longer a closed one. The whole thing is closed. Top alone is not closed surface, so I'll remove the circle here. Then integral E dA cos of theta for the curved surface, plus integral E, again, let's remove this, Integral E dA cos of theta for the bottom is equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon 0. Okay, Q enclosed divided by epsilon 0. Now, uh, for the top angle is equal to 90 degrees. So, cos of 90 is 0. Uh, all of this integral becomes 0. For the curved surface, angle is equal to 0 degrees. Cos of 0 is 1. For the bottom angle is again 90 degrees, cos of 90 is again 0, the whole integral becomes 0. For the curved surface, okay, for the curved surface, since this Gaussian cylinder is symmetrically placed around this uh, uh, charged cylinder, okay, Gaussian cylinder is symmetrically placed around this uh, charged cylinder, so field at every point of the curved surface will be same in magnitude. Okay, same in magnitude. So E in this integral is a constant. We can take it out. Cos of 0 is 1. So integral of dA remains there. So let's go for solving it. First integral becomes 0 plus second integral. E comes out. Cos of 0 is 1. Integration of dA. So E comes out. Integration of dA. Cos of 0 is 1. This is for curved surface. Third integral is again 0 is equal Q enclosed. Q enclosed is equal lambda into L. Okay, Q enclosed is equal lambda into L. So lambda L divided by epsilon 0. Q enclosed divided by epsilon 0. Now, uh, area, uh, integration of dA is the total area, total area of the curved surface of the cylinder, which is 2 pi R L. So E is E into 2 pi R L is equal to lambda L divided by epsilon 0. L cancels out. So this implies E is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 r. 2 pi epsilon 0 r. Okay, so or you can write it this way. E is equal to twice lambda divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r, if you like it this way. So this is for outside. Okay, this is for outside the cylinder. On the surface of the cylinder, on the surface of the cylinder, here charge cylinder, Distance R is the capital R, radius of the cylinder. So on the surface of the cylinder, field will be E on the surface will be lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon 0. So instead of small r, we'll write capital R. So in uh, capital R. 
or you can write twice lambda divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 into capital R. So this is field on the surface, field outside is inversely proportional to R and field inside we found earlier is equal to 0, field inside is equal to 0. Now we are asked to find out field at certain uh, specific points. Part A asks us to find out field at a distance of R by 2, which is obviously inside the charge cylinder, okay, inside the charge cylinder. And field is 0 there, field is 0 there. Then part B asks us to find out field at a distance of twice R, okay, at a distance of twice R. So part B at a distance of twice R. Now twice R is outside the cylinder. Okay. Twi double the radius. Double the radius is obviously outside. Okay. Double the radius. This is R. Twice R is somewhere here. So that is obviously outside the charge cylinder. So we already have equation for that. Outside lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 R. In a row of small r we have to write out twice capital R. So E is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 into twice r, okay, into twice r, which you can see is here, lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 r is field on the surface, so this is half of the field on the surface, this 2 is extra here, so this is half of E on the surface, okay, this half of E on the surface, is that fine? Now, part C asks us to draw the graph for this field. So again, very simple, field distance from the axis of the cylinder, this is 0. Suppose capital R is somewhere here, so this is the dividing line between inside and outside region, 0 to capital R is inside. So 0 is here, capital R is here, so this is all inside, then beyond capital R is outside, okay, beyond capital R is outside. So this part is outside. Inside field is 0, okay, inside field is 0, so field is here, 0. On the surface field suddenly becomes ES. And remember ES was lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 capital R. So it suddenly comes here. So this is a discontinuous function. Then outside field is inversely proportional to uh, inversely proportional to R. We just saw that outside field is inversely proportional to R. Uh, at twice R, let me highlight that first. At twice R somewhere here, field is half of the field on the surface. So this is the point, so graph will be something like this. So inside field is 0, outside field is inversely proportional to R, okay, inversely proportional to R, fine, that will do for this session.